Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. Hello. It's gonna be one of those days. I, I, I'm, I may bang my head off the table during this video. I, I am serious. We are recording back-to-back -back videos talking about uh, stupidity. <laughs> beloved franchises getting reboots and remakes by people who really want to go in and tinker with them. And it's been confirmed on multiple levels now that the live action version of Cowboy Bebop coming to Netflix, you know, the show that nobody asked for, is going to be tinkered with heavily. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, this article dropped today on Polygon where they talked about how they wanted to remain true to the spirit of anime, but they didn't want to really copy the anime series. Well, I'm okay with making new stories, but at least it should feel like it fit and the characters should be the same. But we've already got faux Valentine, mm -hmm. you know, and that whole drama, for those of you who- People are calling her fake, F-A-Y-K-E too. Fake. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the uh, uh, actress, Daniela Pineda, Pineda, I think, who I plays- I don't know, don't care. Plays uh, Faye Valentine has been sort of uh, attacking fans, attacking the character design, the original character design of Faye Valentine. You know, uh, you should be honored that you get to play such an iconic character and uh, you know you can you can get your point across that you maybe you weren't comfortable wearing clothes like that, even though you did it in other shows. Right, you're fine with it other times. You know, but but beyond that, you can do it without running down the character because right now it just looks like you're having a mini meltdown. And no, it just looks having... like it just looks like ego. It's what it all looks like. It's like you know you don't get to tell us what we can do. Yeah, we can. We just don't watch it. Uh, John Cho didn't know what he was getting himself into. Yeah, how do you know? He didn't know Cowboy Bebop was so influential before being cast. So this, is that the banging? That's the banging, yes. Um, I'm sorry, I need a moment. Any, any, anyway. You keep talking, I need a moment, go ahead. Anyway, uh, so all of these parts are coming together and painting a pretty- um, I'm confused. He said he didn't He didn't know how influential it was before being cast, but then he said he would, wouldn't do it unless it was different from the original because you couldn't, you could no way beat the original because it was so groundbreaking and amazing and there was no way they were going to be able to outdo it. Yeah. Um, but he didn't know it was influential before being cast. I, this doesn't make any sense. This is like, which side of your face are you talking out of this hour? Uh, it's, it's called a minute for the paycheck and I'll do my homework later. Hey, do you want to play Spike? They admitted that. Just say I wasn't familiar with the character, but I was all excited to learn and I went and watched all the episodes. Oh, wow, I'm a fan now. People be okay with that even. I signed the contract before I knew I was signing and then I watched the show and I'm like, oh my God, you're not going to put me in that, are you? No, yeah, I got somebody else. So we're, yes. we're going to, we're going to talk about oh, this. God. Uh, what could possibly go wrong, guys? This is like, this is like situation with One Piece. Everybody's like, well, Oda's involved. I'm like, yeah, but have you seen who's writing? it. Before I get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 234,000 subs. Yay! Yay! Thank you for the support. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to be more excited, but I'm just like, what the hell is going on? Do not get excited about any reboot, remake, reimagining of any movie, TV show, animated series, comic book, video game, anything, until you actually see some proof. Until you see the behavior of the people behind the well, show as well. Because I don't think we should be, I'm to the point now where I love things and there's things I'm really, really excited about and I really, really like. And I don't know if I want to even give them my time because it's like, they're not going to listen to anyway and they're just going to keep running people down. So why should I care? Well, I mean, it's kind of the dilemma right now. I saw a Thinking Critical West did a video yesterday, I think, on Mark Wade coming back to DC. Now, normally I would be excited about that because he wrote some of my favorite DC mm. storylines of all time. When we talked to him, he was actually pretty nice. He was normal. I don't know what the hell happened. But between then and now, Mark Wade lost his shit. Now I have zero desire to buy any comic books by Mark Wade because I'm always going to think about, like, well, remember that time Mark Wade lost his shit and there was a lawsuit? Yeah. Um, it's very hard to get excited about products when the people making them are out there shitting on fans or, you know, defending right. stupid creative choices. You wouldn't have the gig. No. If you didn't have fans. You wouldn't have the the property to to mess with if people hadn't kept it popular for years. And they keep um Whatever they go into this, they keep thinking, how are we gonna change it? Make it for modern day. As soon as you hear that, you know you're F. Yeah, it's it's over. Um 
and they're, they they want to tinker with it, but then they they're like, we don't, it's not for you, and it's like, but these are the fans that kept it around for the decades for you to tinker with it now. They, it's like you have to at least take that into consideration. They don't see it that way. They see it as I think, in, in some level, you see the arrogance. It's, well, that's it. It's all arrogance. It's our intellectual property, and you're the pay pig. And you're supposed to just, you're the ATM machine. You're supposed to just keep doling out money. Don't dole out the money. If they don't get the views and they have to go back to whoever's bankrolling it and being like, oh shit. Let's not do any more live action uh, anime adaptations because they never work out. Right. You know? um, anyway. Or this other, whatever other show we're going to reboot. We'll, we'll go out here to Polygon first. Polygon had, uh, had an interview with the showrunner. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Andre Nemec. And uh, get down here, and Nemec says he wouldn't dare try to remake Cowboy Bebop. Instead, to try to bring Cowboy Bebop to Netflix, the showrunner's writing team studied the stars that perfectly aligned to make the original version what it was. Then don't mess with Oh my god, here we go. Then dared to realign them. This is the them. same thing we talk about the Star Wars thing. Yeah. We went to look and see why people liked it, and then we're just going to shuffle it up and try to, try to do it again. It's like... If you're going to dick with it, if you're going to change characterization, which you clearly are, it's not going to work again. What made it work? Well, the characters. Let's change everything about the characters. If Nemec and his team could draw out the core elements of the anime, in theory, they could tell a new set of stories in the show's known universe. That's called a fanfic. Mm -hmm. uh, the chance to cash, uh, cast John Cho. Uh, we'll talk about that, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But it only made the high-risk, high-reward prospects more alluring. We would look at sets. We would look at props. We would look at costumes. We would look yeah, at Yeah, yeah, okay. We'd talk about all these things. Not ape the anime, the showrunner says, but live in the spirit. How many times have we heard this? Anime. Oh, it's a spiritual successor. And basically, it's just we took something popular. They had a fan base. We decided that because we're too cheap-ass and untalented to make our own thing, we're just going to repurpose something that's already been done. And we're going to change everything about it. And then when it doesn't do well because it, it's not going to, we're just going to yell misogyny and, and, you know, racism or something bullshit like that. Sexism. Something stupid. <sighs> There are obviously things that we can't achieve with real people that the anime well, can. that's true. Well, that's what I said. To actually do Cowboy Bebop justice, you would need a ridiculous budget. Hey, One Piece is worse. Oh, God. Yeah, One Piece is, yeah. Good luck. Good luck with uh, Luffy stretching. That's mm -hmm. going to look like Mr. Fantastic in the original Fantastic So they format. want the audience to stretch, you know, what they'll accept. Yeah, so. or he won't stretch because that's problematic. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we can't he just have takes his... it like a man because that's what he should do. <laughs> anyway, Anemic and his writing staff looked beyond the source material to the movies that influenced uh, Watanabe when he developed the anime. So we're gonna we're we know better than he did. Well, they're gonna go to spaghetti westerns. I yeah okay, sure you are. I totally get that. The crow. I mean, look, all of these things. Okay, at this point, why don't you just create? A new series inspired by Cowboy Bebop, which was inspired by all these other things. That's what I'm not understanding. Make a new show that's inspired by this. Stop just, you know, taking something that's already done. Because then, because all it is is a new show with a coat of paint that's the IP. And it's insulting and it's stupid. And immediately you start off with, well, if you don't like this, then you're not the kind of family you want. And I'm like, well, I kept this around for decades. Doesn't matter. You really want the problematic or unproblematic fans. The ones that go along with whatever we tell them to. We're going to build out their stories um, while also mining their past stories from the anime. So we're going to we're going to pad this. They've already got books in American written books and comics in development. These aren't the same characters then at that point. No, I mean, they're not. They're not. They're, That's how you want. You want it. You can do new stories. You can do new episodes and tell new stories. But you have to keep the characters the same. That's the key. Yeah, and we've already seen so far that they're they're not. Because characters um, are people care about. Uh, anybody who's a fan of Cowboy Bebop knows that Cowboy Bebop presents a multicultural I view saw of the future. Part. And you will see elements of all cultures. It's not dystopian. It's not a dystopian world presented in the anime. It's a very beautiful image, uh, imagining of the future. People are more bonded. It's a cowboy show, a little violent, and they kill each other. And life is a little cheap. But multiculturalism is in the, of the anime is what we translate to the screen as well. That was just kind of a, like window dressing. That wasn't a core aspect of the show. Well, I'm sure the, the diversity and inclusion uh, consultants on set 
wanted to make sure that that was, you know, because it seems like every show now you have to have these people on set. They literally just made their own damn job for themselves. I can't wait to see Ed. I am just, I know what you're going to do with Ed. I already, I can feel it. It's going it, to, now I don't think we'll get to Ed until it's gonna, They're going to over-stereotype Ed. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Ed is going to go for a cheap stereotype and tell everybody else they have, that they're istophobic. Uh, Ed is going to be flat out non-binary and Ed is going to preach in every episode about Ed's non binary mm-hmm. to everybody. Did I mention, because I'm not a boy or girl, did I mention that yeah, I, I don't Yeah, that's I'm exactly non-binary. what's going to happen. Just so you know. And people point out, why is, the, why is the dog on a leash? Ayn is very smart. Yes, yeah, so they said. There's no reason for the dog to be on a leash. No. No. Well, they're taking liberties because they couldn't. Well, they're, 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 this whole thing is one See, giant an, liberty. Anime dogs, anime dogs know their place. Uh, this dog. Um, Well-trained dogs are fine. They can handle it. Yeah, they're trained. This is a cheap dog. They went to the pound. It's a cute dog. dog. It's a very cute dog. I, I would pet that dog. I would That's absolutely. The only thing, only saving grace of this whole show is that little dog. Look how cute the dog is. Oh, he's so cute. I get so angry. And I look at the dog and I'm like, oh, but now I feel a little bit better. <laughs> it's true. On the way here, I, I had a little chipmunk in my yard. It was in my feeder. And I was like, I'm so tired of this crap. What the heck? And then I was like, oh, look, it's a chippy friend. Hi, little chippy friend. And then I was happy after I saw the chipmunk. And he just looked at me and like shook his head like. And, and I was like, yay, Chippy. And he's just like, what's wrong with you? So John John Cho, not familiar at all with Cowboy Bebop, apparently. Even and, though in the other interview he said that that's why he did it. Yeah, he, he was asked if he was a fan of the original anime in this interview. He answered he wasn't, having been introduced to the series after being impressed with the script for the first okay. But in the last the interview, series. he's like, I, I, I told him I wouldn't do the show unless it was it was a, it was new stories and it wasn't just a, a panel by panel, you know, version of the of the other of the other show. Uh, but how did you know then? So here's here's what I've I've gathered uh, with a lot of these. And I'm not saying this is John Cho in particular, but I'm saying writers uh, who come in to establish franchises. Right, a lot of times their get out of jail free card is. Well, we're going to take elements of, you know, Batman, but we're just going to, since I don't know anything about Batman and I don't want to spend the two hours it would take to Google something about Batman to write a story I'm getting paid thousands of dollars to write. I'm just going to create Batman in my own image, Mm -hmm. which literally happened with this YA author. It was basically like, well, I don't know all the lore, so I'm just going to make up the kind of Batman. Oh, yes. Now he's Asian. Yeah. You know, gay Asian Alfred and the whole thing. And now I'm just going to make up my Batman for me. It's my truth. It's my Batman. And that's what I see happen, you know, regardless of the franchise. You have people come into it that want the platform. They want the fan base. But they want to come in and be like, yep. It's too much work to uh, do any research, so we're just gonna we're just gonna you know start over. So basically, he got the script, and then he's like, then he watched a series, find one of the most the check. most unique pieces of entertainment he had seen. No kidding. Yeah, don't say. Yeah, um, I didn't know it. The first thing I read and fell in love with was our episode one script, which I thought was really brilliant. Well, of course, you thought it was brilliant when you didn't see the original. And then I thought, what the hell is this? And then I investigated the anime and just thought this was the most unique piece of entertainment I'd seen in a long time. The combination of genres, characters, and music. There's a reason why people have loved it for so many years there. Welcome to the club. Um, called Anish, uh, Anish uh, Shagat, Shagatni? I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Uh, who directed Searching to talk about it. Are you aware of a show called Cowboy Bebop? It's one of the most fucking popular anime of all time. Just saying. Like, I know. Have you ever heard of this little, little art house film called Star Wars? I was going to say called Star Wars, yeah. It's amazing. And this other book, I picked up this book. Uh, I think it was, you know, something self-published on Kindle. Harry, Harry Potter. Potter, Potter, Potter. Yeah, God love her. She's trying so hard. She's trying to peddle her books on Kindle, on mm-hmm. Amazon. But I read it and thought it had some potential. Yeah. <sighs> I know, right? <laughs> Fuck. Look, I don't expect everybody who works on this something to know have have knowledge of everything about that something. Obviously. You know, that I mean that's unrealistic, right? But you know, we see more and more that people are taking the established IP and they're basically just putting their own rinse on it. And a lot of it does, I think, come down to not trying to necessarily reinvent it because they think it needs reinventing, even though that is an issue, but because it's also easier to just be like, well. I watched a couple episodes. Let's make a whole show based no. on 
my version. It's of. what do we own already, and what can we what can we already use, or what can we get cheap that we can just you know make a new version of it for fodder for our, our streaming service. I didn't realize what a big deal it was. He said, "I didn't realize." I think he's figured it out now. I think you just figured it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like when I was in this, this is, it was this show called Star Trek. I just didn't think that it would be that big a deal when I did the movies of it. I watched a few episodes. You know, I had no idea. Yeah, so I think they're starting to get that now, uh, you know, but good luck with that because the expectations on this thing are going to be, well, it's Netflix, so temper your expectations, but. I just get, I, then, then they always go on about, well, the fans, the, the, the horrible fans, and they have expectations. How dare they? The fans can't dictate stuff. It's like, yes, yes, they can because they kept the, they were a fan of the original. They are a fan of what you want to repurpose. There are some expectations you're going to have to meet. Characters should be like characters. You can make new stories. You can have new adventures. You can change some things. But ultimately, the characters need to be the characters. And when you have actors going around shooting their mouths off like they've been doing. Yeah. And, and plus, Hollywood current year doesn't want to actually make you know, characters be the characters. And then they expect everybody to instantaneously love it. And if you don't, well, you're just, you're just a toxic man, baby. Now, to be fair, to the best of my knowledge, John Cho did not attack fans. No, I don't um, think he – not that I know of. But uh, Danielle Panita definitely – didn't do herself any favors by running down Faye Valentine, who's very, very popular. And making fun of Double D women. Yeah, making fun of Double D women. Well, don't worry, we don't have that problem in this show, it's no. obvious. Uh, but uh, there it is, guys. This is going to be, I think, Cowboy Bebop in name only. Yes. Um, it's a Netflix show. It's I, I think it's going to feel cheap. I think they're already trying to find a creative reason to to let you know that it's going to be cheap like hey yeah we couldn't quite do a one-to-one -one of the anime because that would be cost prohibitive and here's so. the kicker though even if it turned out to be really good people are going to be so upset by the way that they that people have behaved around it leading up to the show like it could come out and it could be really good say it is but they're going to remember this actress and how she behaved mm. and then they're going to be like but even if i wouldn't liked it now i'm tainted against liking it you know if they showed instead of told yeah. That they might, you know, a lot of these shows, I think a lot of the trouble, if they would just show instead of tell, that they might have less backlash because when they do it, they do it in such a condescending, petty, childish, you know, bitchy manner, be it a male or a female, um, that the fans get turned off before it even comes out. And where it might be a good show, you know, if, if you could, you know, take away the, the fandom stuff, might, you still might like it and be accepting of it. Your back's up before it even comes out because of the way they behave. So I, my recommendation to like Hollywood, Netflix and places like this, rein in your damn talent and tell yeah. them to stop attacking people. Because, and I'm putting all these articles out talking about how much you're, you, you love it, but you're changing everything. Just, you know, show and don't tell. And you know what? People might be more accepting of the changes if it's good, but they don't, they're already pissed off before it even comes out. Yeah, because it comes across as Hollywood. Hollywood knows best, and you're just a bunch Hubris of... Hubris elitism. Yeah, you're arrogance. just a bunch of pay pigs. Right. Sh just, shut up and pay us. Just you know? show and not... And stop with all this, you know, oh, here's interviews about our thought... No. Nobody cares. Just show it, and if yeah. it's good, it'll do well. You're ruining your own audience. It's anti-hype. That's it's right. It's anti-hype. the opposite. Yeah. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yes. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.